Hello, I'm Keith, and this is my dad, Kerwin. Welcome back to Father and Son, a Star Wars podcast. Thank you for joining us on our spoiler review of the Book of the Mandalorian. Yes. Uh, wait, what? Apologies. 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 Uh, I meant to say spoiler review of the Book of Boba Fett. Okay. Chapter 5, Return of the Mandalorian. All right. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get into it. Yeah. All right. So remember, at the end of the last episode, we heard the Mandalorian theme, mm-hmm. right? And then I asked, are we going to see Din Djarin in the next episode? Did we see Din Djarin? Yes! We sure did. All right. We start off in a meatpacking plant, and the Mandalorian just walks in calmly, and he goes to the back of the room looking for the manager. Yeah. Uh, bounty. He has a bounty. Uh, he's looking for someone he named- He has a tracking fob. He has a fob. He's looking for someone named uh, Cabo Baez. Yes. So, of course, he went, He goes. The, uh, the dude goes coward and is like, I don't know that man. Right. And then when the Mandalorian is to show him the photo he has, Cabo Bias is like, that's not me. That yeah. doesn't even look like me. That doesn't look like me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And in comes a dark saber. Man, the Mandalorian still has a dark saber from uh, the last season. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and it's just. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's taking care of business and uh, he gets his bounty. And you know, he chopped the meat too. Yeah, and well, you know, it's a meat plant, so he took some meat home with him. All right, and just walked out. <laughs> he, okay, he, he he left with some meat and walked out, and he headed to this uh, space station uh, called Glavis, yeah. right? And he goes to see the person who hired him, right? And gives the bounty over to the person. He gets paid. And he asked for the location of where the uh, the armor is located, right? The secret location uh, yep. where the, the the other Mandalorians are located. And he finds the armor. Yep. And so, Paz Vizsla. Yes. So they examine the dark saber, and they talk about the significance of it, like how it was forged and then wielded by Pre Vizslas and that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, the Mandalorian um, hands the armor his Beskar spear because she says it's not a weapon worthy of him fighting with. So because he can injure himself with that steel, that uh, steel. Yeah, it can right. pierce Beskar armor. Right. But then again, he injured himself with the dark saber. Well, and you, you get to let him leave with that. <laughs> well, there's a reason for that. He doesn't really know how to handle the dark saber, we'll, but we'll talk about that. Yep. Yeah. So she forges it into something for Grogu, like a present for Grogu. Yeah. And then they talk about the Great Purge, Night of a Thousand Tears. Right. And that that just reminds me of the Trail of Tears in a way, but with the title. But anyway, that was when the Empire destroyed Mandalore, mm. just wiped it out. Right. Because right. we saw this flashback with explosions and all that. Yeah. Um, it to me, it looked like something out of Terminator 2, the beginning of uh, Judgment Day. Um, but yeah, what? it was a is a you haven't seen Terminator 2, but it it's very similar, very eerie. Uh, you had these K2 droids come out and they're searching around the planet. Um, and the armor did have a quick discussion about uh Bo Katan, right? Because Bo Katan at one point had the dark saber and she was the ruler of mandalore but it a lot of apart. tragedy yeah a lot of tragedy took place in her on her watch yeah because yeah. the uh the dark saber is meant to be won in battle mm-hmm. and it was given as a gift to bo katan by sabine right right and so. even though in rebels we saw it as a happy ending with everybody submitting to her rule I'm pretty sure well. it, it fell apart because yeah. somebody had to just get a repeat of what happened to, to the Duchess mm. and, you know, Bo-Katan's sister. Yeah. It had to go like that. 
Yeah, it's a large, it's a big story about Mandalore and, and the Mandalorians, but, you know, they have a, a history that goes back a thousand years, right? Um, all right, so the next scene, we see the armor training Din on how to use the Darksaber. And apparently the Darksaber is too heavy for him to manage, right? And yeah. what she says is that he's fighting against the saber instead of fighting against the person, the opposite, the opposing person, right? Yeah. And this reminds me of the training that uh, Kanan gave to um, Sabine. Sabine, right? When she held the dark saber at one point, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. The blade feels lighter. You're connecting with it. It's becoming a part of you. Um, it was a challenge for her because the saber was very heavy, but as she became, um, you know, more as trained, she had, more right, skilled. right, when she had more control of the saber, the saber became lighter. So I think what the armor is saying is, is pretty much the same thing to, to, to Din. It's got he, some sort of property. Right. He's not focused. Um, his mind is somewhere else. And, you know, he's just not connected with the dark saber. Yeah, and then comes Paz. Vizla. Yeah, because Paz is just seen his weaknesses and not the fact that he can be trained. So he challenges the Mandalorian to a duel for the dark saber, mm -hmm. and of course the Mandalorian wins. Right, and the armor asks him an important question, which just changed the episode's course. She asks if he has ever removed his helmet, mm -hmm. and he has. So by the rule of creed, he's not a Mandalorian anymore. Yeah. Which makes no sense because born a Mandalorian, wears Mandalorian armor, acts like a Mandalorian, says this is a way, way many, way too many times. Yes. Way more than you should. Yes. Yeah. He follows a religion, you know, to a T. But yes, he did take off his helmet. And apparently that is something that you cannot do, um, according to the Mandalorian creed. Which doesn't make sense. Well, it's it's according to their creed, right? So he went against the creed, and what she, he he wanted to know, okay, how do I atone for this? Uh, what do I need to do? And she mentioned something about going to the mines, uh, the underwater mines of, of Mandalore. You know, first of all, Mandalore doesn't even exist. And you know, Din said, okay, you know what? Let me get back to you on that. And then he picks up the dark saber and he leaves, and he catches a flight to Tatooine. Yep. Okay. All right. So here he's at the checkpoint and he's going through the metal detector. The alarm goes off. Yeah, and he has to take he has to take all the weapons out of him. So, and it just it's just forever because he has so many weapons. Like he has the dark saber, he has the blasters, he has those things. The whistling that, birds, I think what they're called. Yeah, he has yeah. the whistling birds and the, the wrist birds. Gauntlet. He has the uh band of wire, so he has to take that off. And it <laughs> Everything. And then he says, I know what's in there. <laughs> to the security person. So he had to check everything in. But he was allowed to take a jetpack onto the plane. So, you know, he, he had something. True, but. <laughs> and the jetpack's sitting right next to him on the plane. That was, that was interesting. Yeah, but if we've seen before, yeah. jetpacks can be rigged to explode, which is just. Yeah, just as dangerous as what's in that suitcase. But anyway. And it so, does more damage than a blaster. <clears throat> All right. Um, you know, we did talk about um, how the armor took that uh, steel, Beskar steel, and formed it into something for Grogu. We don't quite know exactly what it is, but we saw these links. I'm thinking maybe it could be a shield for for Grogu. I, I don't know. Maybe. We don't we don't know what it's for. But imagine have a Grogu holding a a, a lightsaber in one hand and having a shield in the other. My, or maybe it's a lightsaber hill. I just thought of that. Could be a hill, <gasps> right? I know what it is. I think yeah. I know what it is. What is you it? remember that thing that the man that baby Yoda was always playing with? That little ball thing for the console? The, the, the lever? Yes. That's probably what it is. It's something like that. Because if you notice, it was in the shape of a sphere. True. And, right. it, and it makes sense, doesn't it? It does, yeah. We it could it be was that. that thing. Interesting. I never thought of that, but that's a good point. That's a good point. I like that. Yeah, because baby girl, baby Yoda's not that tiny. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but that was pretty cool. And you know what? You could tell that that Din misses Grogu a lot. You know, so when we were on the plane, we saw this uh, little Rodian looking back at him, and he's looking at the Rodian. You know, I think he had thoughts about 
Grogu, and he also had the cloth, the piece of cloth that was tied by the armorer. And it looks like into Grogu. the shape of Grogu. Yeah, so he's he's really missing uh, that the little guy. So now we uh, land on Tatooine, and Din meets up with Peli Model. Yep. All right. And he is looking for another ship because we know what happened to the Razor Crest. Unfortunately, it ex- exploded. Uh, so he's looking for another ship. And the replacement is this N1 Starfighter. It was original, like all original parts with some modifications. Mm-hmm. Which comes from Naboo. Yeah. Right. It was ordered, it was ordered to be made by the Queen. Mm-hmm. And this is similar to one of the uh, Starfighters that Anakin, Anakin flew. flew. Right? Jinx! That's it in the Phantom Menace, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about this scene with Peli and 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 Din. It was an extensive scene, right? Yeah. They it was a lot going on other than them trying to put this uh, starfighter together. But I watched this conversation a few times just to get some things out of it, and I I picked up two important. Um, I noticed two important things from the conversation. One thing was, um, Peli mentioned that, you know, she is from Tatooine, never left Tatooine, never been off world. So that sounds to me that at some point that she's going to go off world. And the well, question is, of course, because you don't tell somebody I never left this planet. Right. And, and, and then not leave the planet. Right. So I, the question is, where is she going to go? We don't know. The second point that I picked up from the conversation is about the pikes. She started talking to Din about the pikes, how the pikes are running their spice through Tatooine. And how the law enforcement won't not even doing touch them. anything about it. Right. Because yeah, they're scared. They're intimidated. Well, I'm I'm wondering, do you think maybe the pikes have someone working for them on the inside, working for the new Repu- working at the New Republic, who's also working for the pikes? Could that be possible? I'm going to have to read some comics after this. I don't know. Well, more on that. I, I have a theory on that. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. You do? I do. Yeah. Mm. I'll talk about it a little bit more. All right. So um, they got the Starfighter ready to go. Then uh, runs a test flight, takes off, and you see him going through Beggar's Canyon. Yeah. Because right? uh, that's where Anakin had his uh, pod race, right? Pod racing, right. So that brings uh, reminiscence back memory. to the fact that it's wonderful. And then he takes off into space and it's a fast ship. Very and, fast. Yes. And he's just loving it. He's The handling is great. Um, he passes by the same st- the cruiser where the little Rodian yep. is on and he passes right by <laughs> the cruiser and then he gets pulled over by the New Republic. Of course he does, because yeah. apparently the New Republic loves pulling him over. Right. Well, he committed a crime. So actually, so what he said was uh, he was flying too close to that cruiser, well, right? Yeah, I can see why there's laws on that, because if even if you brush the top, that you could end up losing a part or having fuel leak. Boom. Or you can cause an accident, right? True. Yeah. Like if you're running too close into the front and you can't stop, you might actually collide with it. So I can see that why there's lows on it. It just seems sort of silly to me. Yeah. So. Well, so he gets pulled over by, you know, these two uh, excellent fighters, you know, pull up alongside and uh, they start questioning him. You know, they want to ask for his registration, you know, like, OK, you know, this ship, the engine doesn't match the ship. What's going on? And then mentions that, you know, this is a refurbished ship ship and we recognize one of the pilots. Yep, right? Carson, Carson Tiva. Carson Tiva, all right, who works for the New Republic. We've seen him in The Mandalorian, in, um, yeah. the other two episodes, uh, two seasons of The Mandalorian. And he wants to ask Din more questions. And what Din does is just, he just puts on the gas and he just zooms right out of there. And, you know, one the TIE fighter pilot asks Carson, well, should we- Excellent. You know, yeah, the, what did I say? <laughs> TIE fighter. TIE fighter pilot, right. The X-Wing pilot asked Carson, well, you know, should we, you know, did he just go into hyperspace? And, you know, t- you know, Carson said, no, he didn't. He just took off. And the pilot asked, well, should we report this? And Carson says, nah, you know. Yeah, do you want to be filling out You want to spend the whole day back? filling out papers. And they just forget about it. I find that interesting. That's suspicious to me. That, you know, you are law enforcement. But you're lax. Right. And you saw a crime being committed and you let the person go. So Carson 
he thinks he recognizes Din Djarin. You know, he recognizes the voice. He knew that Din used to fly the Razor Crest. He may be letting him off easy. Yeah. They know each other. He he could have easily found where he went well, and yeah, go after they, him. They could track him. Right. And track him, right? And ask him more questions. But instead, they just let him go. Right. I find that very interesting for law enforcement to do something like that. So here is my theory. Well, Chief Wiggum would. <laughs> Does Carson Tiva work? For the Pikes, is that possible that he may be on their payroll? <laughs> because you know what I mean. Like, if law enforcement, you know, I'm just tying this back to what Pelly said: of law enforcement not doing anything about it. That's an example of law enforcement not doing something about a crime being committed. You know, oh, I know yeah. comparing that to, um, you know, com uh, you know, comparing Din just breaking the law, you know, versus somebody running spice through the planet. A crime is a crime, and you, know, you don't, you know, if you let a small crime go, what about a big crime? Yeah, because you know, a small crime is like, um, I don't know, walking a down petty the crime, yeah, walking down the street when right. it's a green light. Yeah, I, I, I just, um, I, I don't think that was a, it was a suspicious thing to do is to let a crime uh, get committed and not do anything about it. So he could be working for the Pikes, or maybe even better it than that, he could be working for Crimson Dawn. It does seem a little overboard to say that, though, after one incident. Yeah, okay. But we'll probably see, because I'm with you on that. It, it does seem a little sus it, to it's, put it's, it among us. Yes, it, right, exactly. I Something just doesn't seem right about that. And again, you know, from day one, we've been saying that Crimson Dawn is behind all of this. If he's not working for the Pikes, maybe he's working for Crimson Dawn, because, you know, if um, you're a fan of the comic books, um, you know that Crimson Dawn has people everywhere working for them, even in the Empire. You know, they have people working for the Empire who's also working for Crimson Dawn. So you can have two times. You, like you can absolutely have they can absolutely have somebody working for the New Republic as well. So, you know, just just checking, you know, take a look at that Carson Tiva guy, you know, and see what happens next. OK, but anyway. So the Mandalorian comes back to Tatooine. He loves it. He loves the flight. He yeah. gets, gets, gets out of the uh, the Starfighter. Because uh, before he was a little doubtful. He was like, you know, I'm not sure about this. You promised me a Razor Crest. Right. Yeah. But he didn't get a Razor Crest, but he has something faster. Um, so it seems like he's he's pretty cool with it. And he gets out and he has a visitor. Yep. And the visitor is Fennec Shan. Fennec Shan. Okay. So and Fennec she breaks in and nobody even knew she was there. Yeah. But Fennec Shan has a proposal. So since in the last episode, Boba Fett says that he's short on muscle, she decided to hire the Mandalorian, and Fennec even offers to pay. So Din Djarin says that it's on the house, but first he has a visit to pay to Grogan. How about that? And then there ends the episode, episode five. Yep. Now I'm just wondering, is Luke going to actually let Din see Grogu? Like, what if he says no? That's a good question. Right. Then again, I don't think he will because it, it's a child and father. You can't keep a child and father apart. Well, okay. To to step back, so we know um, as far as a Jedi, um, the Jedi, of course, has their own creed. You know, they're really not about having attachments. Attachments. You know, relationships with others. And Grogu is in the middle of training as a Jedi, so I'm wondering if Luke will allow Din Djarin to see Grogu. Um, we don't know. I expect he would because, you know, Luke is not, um, you know, yes, he is a Jedi, but family is very important to him, as we know, you know. Yeah, because he's a baby, but he's 50. Right, no, I meant like a family, like his family, Luke's family, like his father, you know, like his relationship with his father. He wanted to connect with his father. He has his sister, Leia. He's got friends like Han and Chewie. Yeah, so. he still connects with them. So Exactly, right. It so. doesn't make sense to all of a sudden be like, no, you can't, no, you can't see your surrogate father because you're a dude, because you're in Jedi training. And because you're in Jedi training, you must be an emotionless soldier until you're done. Yeah, right. So well, I they don't, just told people to stand, to stand there. Don't do anything, really. Yeah. So I don't think there'll be a problem with um, Luke allowing Din to see Grogu. So hopefully, <laughs> you know, there's no conflict there. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I want to talk about, I know we don't talk about every director 
who's directed an episode, but I want to talk about this director, Bryce Dallas Howard. Howard. Um, she's fantastic. You know, she's done other Mandalorian episodes, knocked it out of the park. This episode was fantastic. She knows the lore. Um, she just her 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 filmmaking skills is just off the charts. Uh, I so like I just that. wanted to, you know, just you know, say Bryce Dallas Howard, you did a wonderful job, and you know that she comes from um, a family of actors and filmmakers. Her father started out as a child actor, Ron Howard, right? And he is now an Academy Award winning director. Yeah. And he also, I, I've seen a lot of his films. So, you know, two in particular I enjoy is Cocoon and A Beautiful Mind. But you know him as the director of Solo, a Star, yep. Wars, a Star Wars story. Yeah. So I guess now they're both directing Star Wars stuff. Yeah, and they're both directing Star Wars. So very talented. Just a, again, a shout out to Bryce Dallas Howard for a very wonderful um, action packed episode. All right. Let's talk about Chapter Six a little bit. You think we're going to see Grogu in Chapter Six? I think we're going to see Grogu in Chapter Six. Okay. Here's what. It, well, here's what I think. Okay. Well, let me let me let you finish. So you think you're going to see Grogu in Chapter Six, and that's because. Well, if the Mandalorian has a gift for him, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense not to deliver it. And seeing as this is before Kylo Ren was taken on as an apprentice. I don't think we'll have any trouble there. Okay. Right. And you know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to have to have the Mandalorian have a gift for Grogu, but not give it to him. Got it. Okay. Uh, that makes that makes perfect sense. All right. Now here's my take. Are you gonna say something else? I was also going to say if he's going to be in the book of Boba Fett until further notice, then he really has to make that stop before he comes back on the show because yes. he has to he has to make it before episode seven I, right i get i get exactly what you're saying now here's my thing um we all love grogu grogu i love grogu yeah um i don't have a problem if i see grogu in the next episode but to be honest with you i don't want to see grogu in chapter six because to me it's just taking um more time away from the major plot of the series and that is with boba um, gathering his group to have this war with the pikes so you know what i mean so if the mandalorian goes off and finds grogu and you know we have this story of the two of them it really doesn't have anything to do with the main storyline so i would prefer you know because this is still the book of boba fett I would prefer that they go back to the to Boba and you know talk about this army he's forming for himself and find out, okay, well, what's gonna happen with this war with the pikes? That's what I want to see. But you're right. What could happen is um we may not see Din visiting Grogu, right? They may leave that for season three. They could leave that for season three to show us exactly what happened, right? And then we jump forward to, okay, after that, seeing um, the Mandalorian and Boba Fett meet up with all the other heavies to try to fight the Pikes. So I wouldn't mind, you know, we'll see that storyline, but we can wait until season three to see it. But you don't want to wait until season three. You want to see it now. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, anyway. I didn't upset you, did I? No. Okay. All right. I think that's it then. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. It's it's fine. All right. Thank you very much for this episode. Where can people find us? Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Radio Public, Amazon Music, Audible, Pandora, Spreaker, wherever you get your podcasts. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. And we are on YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel. If you've not done so, hit the like button. Um, we really appreciate those uh, comments that you may have. And, you know, if you um, write a review, if you can write a review for us on your streaming, favorite streaming platform, we would love that as well. That would be very helpful for us. Yeah. All right. And we also have a website, fathersongalaxy.com. All right. Great. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't upset you. No. Yeah, well, you know, okay. You want to see Grogu? A little bit. Yeah, okay, a little well, bit. that's fine. You want to see Grogu next week. I prefer to wait, but we'll see what happens next week. All right, everyone. So thank you very much for joining in. Until next time.
Take care and we will see you again. Bye.